Good day everyone. Welcome to our math tutorial. In your module, quarter 3, week 2, we will only focus on the lesson which we find it difficult, that is, writing proofs. In writing proofs, we have to recall the postulates, the theorems, the properties of equality and congruence, and the definition of basic geometric terms, because this will be used as basis for our reasoning. Let's start with postulates involving segments and rays. Ruler postulate. This states that points on a line can be matched one-to-one -one with a set of real numbers in such a way that to every point on the line there corresponds exactly one real number. To every real number there corresponds exactly one point on the line and the distance AB between any two points, A and B, is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates of the points. To explain the postulate, let's have this figure. So we have there a number line. If you notice, we have 0, 2, and negative 2, which are real numbers. Below negative 2, we have capital letter A, which symbolizes point A. And we have capital letter B, which symbolizes point B. So if we are going to get the distance from A to B, we have to subtract the coordinates of A and B and then get the absolute value. So we have there 2 minus a negative 2, that is 4. The absolute value of 4 is 4. Therefore, the distance from A to B is 4 units. Let's have segment addition postulate. It states that if B is between A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC. So if there is no segment on top of AB, BC, and AC, we are referring to their length. Let's have this figure. So we have there a segment AC. And if B is between them, so we can say, that the length from A to B added to the length from B to C is just equal to the length from A to C. Postulates involving angles. We have angle measure postulate. It states that to each angle ABC, there corresponds one real number, measure angle ABC, called the measure of angle ABC, such that Measure angle ABC is between 0 to 180. In geometry, the meshes of the angles is only between 0 to 180. Angle addition postulate. It states that if O lies in the interior of angle ABC, then measure angle ABO plus measure angle OBC equals measure angle BABC. Let's have this figure to understand the postulate. So we have there angle ABC, where B is our vertex, and ray BA and ray BC are the sides of the angle. So if we have O at the interior of the angle and connect it with point B, the vertex of the angle, we have there ray BO. If we add the measure of angle ABO to the measure of angle OBC, it is just equal to the measure of angle ABC. Definition of terms Angles An angle is a union of two non-collinear rays with a common endpoint called the vertex. Angles are classified into two according to sides, and according to measure. But our review will only focus on classification of angles according to measure. We have acute angle, an angle which measures between 0 to 90 degrees. Right angle measures exactly 90 degrees. And an obtuse angle measures between 90 to 180 degrees. Congruent angles. These are angles which have equal measure. Angle bisector. It is a ray 
that splits an angle into two congruent angles. To explain the concept of congruent angles and angle bisector, let's have this figure. So we have here angle AOB. Ray OC is the angle bisector. So this bisects angle AOB. Therefore, angle AOC and angle COB are congruent angles. Given angle AOB is equal to 60 degrees, so since it is bisected by ray OC, the measure of angle AOC, which is 30 degrees, is equal to the measure of angle COB, which is also 30 degrees. Properties of equality. We have reflexive. A number is equal to itself, that is, A is equal to A. Symmetric property. If A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. Transitive property. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then simply A is also equal to C. Substitution property of equality. If A is equal to B, the A may be replaced with B at any time. The concept of substitution and transitive property are just the same. Addition property of equality or APE. For all real numbers, A, B, and C, if A is equal to B, then A plus C is equal to B plus C. Subtraction property of equality or SPE. If A is equal to B, then A minus C is equal to B minus C. Multiplication property of equality, or MPE. If A is equal to B, then A times C is equal to B times C. Division property of equality, or DPE. If A is equal to B and C is at equal to 0, then A divided by C is equal to B divided by C. Now these properties, if you notice, if we add, subtract, multiply, or divide an equal value on both sides of the equal sign, the expressions are just equal. Aside from knowing the postulates, theorems, properties of equality and congruence, as well as definitions of basic geometric terms, you should also be equipped on supplying the conclusion for the given hypothesis, because this concept will help us in making the statements in the two-column proof. Let's try to work on this simple activity. Supply the conclusion for the given hypothesis. Now you have to remember, when we create a conclusion, we have to look for a clue in the given hypothesis. Let's have number one. If angle one is congruent to angle two, your keyword there is congruent. So if angles are congruent, based on the definition, they have equal measure. So your conclusion will be, Measure angle 1 is equal to measure angle 2. Number 2, if AB is equal to CE. So AB and CE are referring to the lengths of segment AB and CE. So if they have equal length, same with number 1, they are also congruent. So your conclusion will be segment AB is congruent to segment CE. Number 3, if angle B is a right angle, what will be your clue? It is right angle. So from the definition, right angle measures exactly 90 degrees. So your conclusion would be measure angle B is equal to 90 degrees. Number four, ray PM bisects angle APO. So from the word bisects, it divides angle APO into two congruent angles. So your conclusion would be measure angle APM is equal to measure angle MPO. Number five, ray BP is perpendicular to ray BC. So from the concept of perpendicular lines, these are intersecting lines that form right angle. Therefore, angle PBC, where B is the vertex, is a right angle. I hope the concepts on supplying the conclusion for the given statements is clear. 
So we are now ready to work on the two column proof. Let's try this activity. So we have there two column proof. So if you observe, in the first column, we have the statements, and on the second column, we have the reason. Statements are already provided, so this activity allows us to give only the reason. Now remember, when we talk about reasons, we will only be using postulates, theorems, properties of equality and congruency, as well as definition of basic geometric terms. Let's read first the problem. If A, B, C, and D are points on the line in the given order and AB is equal to CD, prove that AC is equal to BD. So look at the figure. So you have there A, B, C, and D are collinear because from the problem it was stated they are on the line. So remember the length from A to B is equal to the length from C to D. And B to C are both present from A to C and B to D. Let's start with the proof. Statement number one, A, B, C, and D are collinear. So you have seen this one in the given problem. So your reason would be given. Number two, a, B is equal to C, D. It is also in the given problem. Therefore, it is given. Now, let's look at the figure. Number three statement states that B, C is equal to B, C. So, it's very clear that B, C is equal to itself. So, therefore, from the property we have learned a while ago, it is reflexive property. Now, since BC is equal to itself, and if we add BC to AB and BC also to CD, we will have there statement number four, AB plus BC is equal to BC plus CD. We are adding same length on both sides of the equal sign in number two. So that is addition property of equality. Since AB plus BC, if added, that's equal to AC, and BC also plus CD, if added, is equal to BD, so we are only adding the small segments to create a bigger segment, that is segment addition partially. Now, since in number 4, AB plus BC is equal to BC plus CD, so therefore we can conclude in the number 6 statement, that AC is also equal to BD. The reason for this is transitive property. Now that you know the important ideas about this topic, let us go deeper by moving on to the next topic. Let's try this last activity. Given, Ray BF bisects angle ABC. Angle ABD is congruent to angle CBE. We have to prove that angle DBF is congruent to angle EBF. So we have there two columns. First column will be for the statement, and second column will be for the reason. So what we are going to do is to supply the missing statements. Let's look at the first given statement. BF bisects angle ABC. So since that is given, your reason will be given. Let's look at the second statement. Since it bisects, therefore, measure angle ABF is equal to measure angle FBC. Where did you get this statement? From the definition of angle bisector. Then, from the figure we have there, measure angle ABF is equal to measure angle ABD plus measure angle DBF and measure angle FBC is equal to the measure of angle EBF plus measure angle CBE. So that is angle addition postulate. Now since in number two statement, the measure of angle ABF is equal to measure angle FBC, we can conclude that measure angle ABD plus measure angle DBF is equal to measure angle EBF 
plus measure angle CBE. That's why the reason there is transitive. Then we have angle ABD is congruent to angle CBE. We get that idea from the given. So the reason there is given. Now since these two angles are congruent, we can say that measure angle ABD is equal to measure angle CBE. The reason there would be if angles are congruent, then their measures are equal. Or you can simply write their definition of congruent angles. Now since they have equal measure, we can substitute measure angle ABD to measure angle CBE. So that gives us measure angle ABD plus measure angle DBF is equal to measure angle EBF plus measure angle ABD. That is, the reason there is substitution because we replace measure angle CBE in number 3 with measure angle ABD. Number 6. Remember, measure angle ABD and measure angle ABD are just the same. So we can simply eliminate them. So that gives us measure angle DBF is equal to measure angle EBF. Since we eliminated the same measure, that is subtraction property of equality. Now since the two angles have equal measure, we can conclude that angle DBF is congruent to angle e EBF. So our reason there would be definition of congruent angles. I hope you have understood the lesson. Thank you for listening and see you next week. Once again, this is Bunyasa Kappa, your math teacher.